here tonight to give you a novel prescription to talk about reading for the health of it. Now, reading has been thought of as a healthy practice for thousands of years. Uh, the library in ancient Thebes actually had these words written over their doorway, um, the healing place of the soul. But not everyone always has felt this way. I don't know how many of you, as children, heard someone saying to you, put your book down, go outside and play. I heard that quite a bit, and you can probably tell. Okay, so anyway, um, while reading, sorry, while um, at, uh, physical exercise is very important for children as well, reading is equally important as exercise for the mind, as you can see. And reading has sometimes been described as entertainment or escapism or even a waste of time. In fact, in the Victorian era, novel reading among young women was frowned upon as something that might soften their minds or weaken their morals. And in fact, the Victorian etiquette books were very firm on the point that women should never read novels before noon. <laughs> but reading is actually beneficial. Um, reading, not just informational reading, when we're looking for facts about nutrition, about disease, but actually reading fiction can be beneficial for our health. It can affect our mental health, our emotional and social health, and even our spiritual health. The only thing reading can't do directly is to improve our physical health. But then again, that might depend on where you do your reading. So, There are three key areas in which reading can benefit us. First of all, our mental health. Now, reading is a complex procedure. It's been evolved over thousands of years by adapting parts of the brain that were not originally created to read. And reading involves recognizing letters as symbols and decoding their significance, and then tying all that to our own experience to truly understand their meaning. And this uses multiple parts of the brain, uh, including our occipital and temporal lobes, as well as parts of the frontal gyrus. But the amazing thing is that once we're a fluid reader, this all happens in a moment without any conscious effort. Now, it's generally accepted that it takes about 10,000 hours to become expert at anything. And when we practice reading en route to becoming expert, what we're doing is creating new synapses and strengthening and building new pathways in the brain, which is known as building cognitive reserve. And this essentially means the brain has alternate pathways to take in case any of our primary pathways become damaged or blocked. And many studies have shown that regular reading actually delays the effects of brain injury or disease, such as excessive lead exposure or even Alzheimer's and dementia. But this brings us to the second area that reading can help us with, and that's our emotional health. And this is something that most people might think of when they think about novel reading, seeing the world through other eyes. A novel is the original virtual reality simulator, except there's no fancy technology involved. We just open the pages and we're transported to another place, another time, and another person's mind. We can begin to share the way the writer sees the world. We can begin to understand that others may perceive the world very differently from the way we do. Novel reading builds empathy, and the more each individual has connection and sympathy for others, the stronger our communities will be. But reading is also a safe way to experience unfamiliar emotions or situations in a safe manner. It's a way for us to learn from mistakes without having to make them ourselves. In reading, we can try on other lives or we can learn more about our own. A novel can be both a mirror and a window. But reading can also be a spiritual practice. And not just when reading a spiritual text or a religious guidebook, but in regular everyday fiction reading. How? Well, in reading, we are isolated in our own individual experience, but we're also reminded of how interdependent we are with the worlds represented in our books. In reading, as in prayer, we are imaginatively reaching out toward the consciousness of an absent other, and we can be changed by our encounter and our engagement with that other. In reading, we can practice spiritual disciplines like our capacity for attention or our ability to listen. In literature, as in, in spirituality, we are searching for meaning in life. And the divine nature of creativity can be shared both when you're writing and when you're reading. And seeing someone else's steps along their journey can help us along our own. Well, I hope all this has convinced you that novel reading is worth your time. Reading for Health is freely available to everyone. If you can't afford to regularly buy new novels, 
your local public library, you can fill your prescription at no cost. So there's really no excuse you need to make when you pick up a book. You don't need to justify your reading choices, no matter what your age. Fiction is good for us in so many ways. So remember, we should all just be reading for the health of it. Thank you.